the first king of Aurea launches an ineffective assault on a dragon that lives in his domain. The monarch is left at the dragon's mercy after all of his warriors are slain. Many centuries later, Queen Isabel of Aurea proposes to her son, Prince Henry, to Elodie, the adolescent daughter of Lord Bayford. King Roderick is in charge of a vast fleet of ships and gold-laden carriages. Elodie consents to the marriage at her father's insistence in order to aid their underprivileged family. According to Lord Boyford, their kingdom has severe winters and is located far to the north. He claims that their stores are depleted and that without assistance, they won't survive until the following summer. Elodie's younger sister is named Floria. Together with Floria and Lord and Lady Bayford, Elodie journeys to Aurea. It is demonstrated that Elodie is a skilled maze designer. The Bayfords are astounded by the richness and extravagance of the kingdom when they first arrive in Aurea. From her room, Elodie observes a fire raging atop a neighboring mountain during the night. Henry and Elodie don't seem to be interested in one another at first, but they soon become friends since they both want to travel. In a secret meeting with the Queen, Lord Boyford receives an offer of gold beyond his wildest dreams. But when he leaves the meeting, Lady Boyford can tell that something is bothering him. Lady Bayford, Elodie's stepmother, is unable to win Queen Isabel over. By claiming that Lady Bayford is not descended from royalty, but rather the daughter of a rope manufacturer, Isabel disparages her. Isabel is aware that this union is not an exchange as Bayford needs the money and her family needs a wife. Elodie is referred to as Elois by Isabel because she can't even recall her name. Lady Bayford begs Elodie to call off the engagement in vain. Elodie and Henry participate in a long-standing custom in the mountains following their wedding the following day, purportedly as a way to commemorate their union. According to Isabel, their forefathers discovered the dragon that destroyed their villages when they first arrived in this area. The dragon was fierce and the last of its kind. After attacking the dragon in its lair, the king lost. Isabel tells of the first king's agreement with the dragon to sacrifice his three daughters in exchange for peace. The king prioritized his responsibility to his subjects over his daughter's love. We remember this sacrifice every generation. Henry brings Elodie over the dragon's lair and throws her into the gulf after a ritual in which their hands are sliced and bound together. As Elodie gets over her fall, she understands that she is the genuine offering. The dragon awakens to her cry. At the bottom of the abyss, Elodie discovers numerous other pieces of jewelry that don't belong to her, proving that she is most definitely not the first person there. Elodie discovers that she is the real sacrifice once she recovers from the fall. The dragon is soothed by her cries. Elodie discovers numerous additional pieces of jewelry at the bottom of the chasm suggesting that she is most definitely not the first person there. Elodie discovers during their conversation that the dragon thinks she is a member of the Royal Orion line because Henry's blood during the ritual covered up her blood scent. After the dragon burns Elodie's leg, she manages to get away and finds a bright cave full of slugs, which she gathers to use as a light source. Elodie arrives in a room bearing a map carved into the wall. The words, safe here she cannot reach, and the names of numerous previous victims, including Beatrice, Victoria, Artemis, Genevieve, Fatima, and Carlotta. Elodie's burn on her leg gets healed by the slugs while she sleeps. Elodie proceeds according to the map, but it ends in a steep plunge on the mountainside. The fact that there is no way out of the dragon's lair upsets Elodie. The cause for the royal sacrifices is revealed when she finds the carcasses of slain dragon hatchlings. Elodie believes that the first king killed three dragon hatchlings, which is why the dragon became agitated and attacked them. The first king offered to pay any price and pleaded for forgiveness. To keep the peace, the dragon required a royal sacrifice of three girls from their lineage per generation. Lord Bayford leads a rescue party that arrives. When the dragon confronts Lord Bayford, he acknowledges that he exchanged his daughter's life for wealth and the well-being of his people. However, he was unable to bear the guilt. Elodie manages to leave the mountain despite the fact that the dragon kills them. While the dragon tries in vain to pursue them, she steals one of the rescue party's horses and hides beneath a rock. After learning that Elodie's sacrifice has failed due to the conflagration, 
Isabel is forced to abduct Floria, Elodie's younger sister, as a stand-in. Elodie rides back up the mountain to save Floria, who has been left alive as bait, after Lady Bayford rides out and tells her. In order for the dragon to get to Floria, Elodie sets up a distraction. She approaches the dragon and tries to persuade her that they were duped by the Orions, telling her sister to hide. The dragon asserts that he arrived uninvited, despite the Orion's assertion that the king simply attacked the dragon to protect his people. According to Elodi, the brides and the Orion royal's blood mixed during the wedding, leading the dragon to believe that the princesses were members of the Orion nobility. Elodie tries to mislead the dragon into burning herself by spitting fire in front of a rock that reflects the flames back onto the dragon, but the dragon doesn't believe her and strikes. Elodie, with the dragon at her disposal, informs her that, like the first king, she has been murdering defenseless girls for millennia. By using the glowing slugs to heal them both, Elodie wins the dragon's respect and allegiance. Then Elodie shows up at the palace to ruin another wedding. This would be the third princess in this generation to be offered to the dragon, following Elodie and Floria, revealing the Orion's betrayal. All of the Orion royals and nobles are inside the palace when the dragon burns it down, following Elodie's advice for the new bride and her family to escape. A few days later, the dragon and Elodie, Floria, and Lady Bayford set off for home, laden with provisions. Yeah.